Last time I showed you how to calculate the maximum climb angle. Now we discovered that in order to climb as steep as possible, the pilot should apply maximum thrust and fly at the airspeed for maximum excess thrust. Now in case of an idealized jet aircraft with constant maximum thrust as a function of airspeed, this situation can be solved analytically. In that e idealized situation, the maximum excess thrust is present at the minimum drag condition. Now imagine that we have an aircraft without engine thrust, a glider, or an aircraft in trouble with all engines filled. Now these kind of aircraft have zero thrust at all flight speeds. So if we go back to the performance diagram, then the maximum thrust curve is in fact a straight line, just like in the idealized jet engine, but now on top of the x-axis. Thrust minus drag will again be maximum in the minimum drag condition. In fact, it is a negative value now. But at all other flight speeds, it is even more negative. So what does this mean? If we have zero thrust, the aircraft will be performing a gliding flight. It is descending. The flight path angle is defined as being positive when, when climbing. So the maximum climb angle in a gliding fact is in fact the minimum descent angle. Now this angle indicates at which location the aircraft will hit the ground. So this means that if we want to glide as far as possible, we should fly at the airspeed for minimum drag. Now let's have a look at the equation of motion to see how far an aircraft can actually glide. So let's start by writing down both equations of motion for climbing flight and descending flight. Now we have thrust minus drag minus weight sine of gamma is equal to zero and we have lift is equal to weight. Now remember that we assumed that the aircraft was performing a steady flight and also a straight flight. Now if we have this, we can also state that, of course, if we don't have thrust, this term over here will be equal to zero. So that means that if we rewrite the first equation, then we find that the sine of gamma is equal to minus drag divided by the aircraft weight. And since lift is equal to the weight, we can also state that this is minus drag divided by the lift. Now if you would write out these, e these equations for drag and lift, you could also say that this is minus cd times half rho v squared s divided by cl times a half rho v squared s. And you can immediately see that a lot of terms here are both in the numerator and the denominator. So you can remove all these terms and you will find that this is minus cd over cl. Now both cd and cl will always be positive values. You will always have a positive drag coefficient and you will also have a positive lift coefficient. So that means that this whole term over here is negative. So we find that sine of gamma is minus cd over cl. Now remember that we were interested in how far an aircraft can glide. So if I draw an airspeed vector and I, I'm interested in this angle because it's, it determines where I'm going to hit the ground, then this angle is in fact the negative of the flight path angle since a flight path angle is always defined positive as being upwards. So since gamma is minus or the descent angle is minus the climb angle, we could also state that 
the sine of the descent angle will be equal to CD over CL. So this minus term here is removed. So that is a nice result because if we want to achieve a minimum descent angle, so I want to have this angle over here as small as possible, then we should fly at the condition for minimum CD over CL. And this is in fact the same as stating that CL over CD should be maximum. Now that is one specific result, so we have one variable we're interested in and it's a function of two other variables, CL and CD. But remember that we also have our parabolic lift drag polar, which is ver valid for any aircraft, which states that CD is CD0 plus K1 times CL plus K2 times CL squared. So, in other words, it is a function of CL. CD is a function of CL, and therefore CL over CD is also a function of CL. So if we want to maximize it, we have to take the derivative and equate it equal to zero. Now, what I urge you to do is to have a look at an earlier video when I treated maximum range. There I already solved the situation where CL over CD is maximum. In fact, we found that in that specific situation CL should be equal to the square root of CD0 divided by K2. So both these terms are constants, so in fact this CL is a fixed value which you can calculate if you have the aerodynamics of a specific aircraft. Now let's fill that in into our equation where we have the sine of gamma is CD over CL. So let's fill in this optimum relation. Then of course CD is equal to CD0 plus K1 times CL, and now I'm taking this optimum CL, so the square root of CD0 divided by K2 plus K2 times CL squared, and if I take the square of this whole relation I get CD0 divided by K2, and of course I have to divide the whole equation by CL, which is the square root of CD0 divided by K2, and if I solve that I find that the sine of the descent angle should be equal to 2 times CD0, because I have one CD0 here and I have a CD0 over there, divided by the square root of CD0 divided by K2, plus a constant term K1, because this whole relation over here becomes K1. So please notice that all these terms here are constants, so the sine of gamma 
is also a fixed constant if we know what the parabolic lift drag polar looks like. So if we are familiar with the aerodynamics of a specific aircraft, we can actually calculate the sine of the descent angle, which will result in the furthest distance you can fly without engine thrust. So, if the lift drag polar is known, the minimum glide angle can actually be calculated. But do you notice something strange about the equation for the angle? There is actually no weight in the equation. Apparently, it does not matter whether the aircraft is very heavy or very light. Now that is very curious, isn't it? So where does the weight come into play? Essentially, the equations we see here were derived on the equation of motion parallel to the airspeed vector. And there's a second equation of motion as well, which states that lift should be equal to the weight. Now from this, you can derive the airspeed equation. And this equation does have a weight term in there. So what does this mean if we have an aircraft and compare it with an aircraft with a high weight condition with a low weight condition? Now let's take two aircraft weights, one light and one heavy. Now the descent angle will be identical because there is no difference in the aerodynamic shape. However, the airspeed of the heavy aircraft will be larger, since in both cases the aircraft flies at the same optimal constant CL. Now let's visualize the airspeed vectors. The magnitude is different, but the direction is the same. So both aircraft will reach the same point on the ground. But the lighter plane will take more time to arrive there. Now this concludes the calculation of the minimum descent angle in gliding flight. In the end, we just touched upon the time aspect as well when considering different aircraft weights. And this time aspect will play a major role in the next video when I, when I will address the maximum rate of climb problem.